My name is uh, Muhammad Haruna Manta. I'm the High Commissioner of Nigeria. The President, in your address, the EFF does not see the value addition in the AU as well as SADC. The yeah. second question I wish to ask is um, the very radical posture of uh, the socialist concept, which probably was very relevant in the, uh, after the Berlin Conference, 1880 something, 1884, 85. But today, uh, we don't have colonialism to fight as such, because the whole of Africa has been decolonized. South Africa is independent, Namibia is independent, and so is the whole African continent, with the exception of probably some aggression against uh, Western Sahara. So if, is it not time that EFF takes a posture that is more uh, inclusive of development concepts rather than uh, imaginary fighting uh, colonialists that do not exist in any way? But the first thing we need to do, which the AU must firmly resolve, is to do away with the visa for Africans. There should not be a visa for Africans. The same way the Europeans have one visa, they travel everywhere, they are one thing. They, but they, the, what they have, they don't want us to have it. There shouldn't be a visa in Africa. Free movement of people should be allowed. And there's no one who's going to leave Nigeria to come and settle here. It's not true, that thing. It's a myth. I mean... We've got, I come from a province called Limpopo. We don't need visa to go to Johannesburg. But people are still there in Limpopo. They have not left Limpopo to Johannesburg. So visa does, doing away with visa doesn't mean automatically people are going to leave their homes to where the economy is prospering. It's not true. Johannesburg, Houting is doing much better than Limpopo. But the people are not leaving Limpopo to Houting. So why would people leave Lagos to here? For what? It's their home. They will come here, look for what they are looking for, and take it back where they come from. We'll go to Lagos to do the same and come back home. We have a problem here of unemployment of South Africans who are told by the previous apartheid mentality and colonialism brainwashed that South Africa is superior, is better. They've got the best qualifications. They never go out of the country to go and look for jobs in other countries. Why? Why? Why are they not going all out of Africa? We have nurses, we've got, uh, we're now we're told doctors, we now have teachers, we have this. Africa is in need of that skill. Today, I want us to talk about Julius Malema, and in a certain uh, speech that he was giving, uh, Julius Malema is very vocal, and uh, we love it when our leaders are able to speak uh, for the minds of many uh, voices that uh, can't be reached. Malema is that voice of the unheard. Malema is the voice of the Africans who are being oppressed and they want to, uh, they want to face freedom. So Malema is not only speaking for South Africa. I'm always telling uh, South Africans this. Um, a prophet may not be respected uh, in their own homeland. But let me tell you this. Uh, Malema not only speaks for South Africans. He speaks for Africans and he speaks for uh, the African uh, diaspora. That is something that you need to understand. There is a reluctance because to create a formidable thing like an African government, uh, because everybody benefits from these little cocoons. You are called the president of uh, Swaziland. Prime, was this uh, president, what, the prime minister or something? But your country is not bigger than Soweto. What is that? Then it means Soweto must be a country also. So, but because they benefit from that, they don't even want to engage in this discussion. Because it's an individual who benefit from it. That's why there's no concrete plan to go into it. And there's no a single president that leads this discussion and put it firmly on the agenda of the AU that the original thought of the AU as OAU, it was to establish, the founding fathers wanted to establish a solid government, 
and they got defeated in that discussion. But the intention has always been to create a solid government from its inception, that we should come together and be one. And uh, something came out of it, and it never went back to what it was supposed to be, a government, a united government of Africa. And that's what we'll advocate for ourselves as the EFF. Africa Free Trade is a movement in the right direction. You go into work anywhere in Africa, in Ghana, it doesn't mean you left your home. It's the same as me leaving Limpopo to come here. When the time permits, I go back home. So what is the problem? Let's go. They, they need to go. The, the continent, it's our home. We, we must all go there. Something is bothering me, and um, it has always been bothering me about uh, the relationship Africans have with Africans and the relationship African leaders have with uh, Western leaders. Uh, remember that these people from the West, uh, Europe, and the United States of America, they colonized Africans. They colonized Africans, and uh, it reached a time when Africans could not take it anymore. And so we as Africans, uh, necessarily not me, but my, my ancestors, uh, they fought for our independence. So in 1964, uh, my country, Kenya, gained its independence from the British. Uh, in, uh, in 1994 now, uh, the country of South Africa, South Africa gained its independence from the British and in some years back in the 1990s or the 60s, uh, Nigeria gained its independence uh, from the British. So um, there is some loyalty that African leaders may have towards uh, these uh, Western uh, powers because they colonized them. There's this concept called uh, the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth are countries that were colonized by the British. Uh, we all know that the, co the countries in the Commonwealth are countries that are uh, under the jurisdiction of war, or rather war in the jurisdiction of uh, the British Empire, the old British Empire. It's no longer an empire today. However, when the, Afri when, the, when the colonizer left, he left another colonizer back here in Africa. In each country, the colonizer was uh, cloning himself, uh, leaving a copy that uh, would run for him, that would run his interests, his interest or her interests in the country. Uh, this can be seen by countries such as uh, Burkina Faso, countries such as the Mali, countries such as Niger, and it's so saddening, it's so sick that uh, many countries in West Africa have abandoned these countries. So without further ado, let's dive into this video and get to learn what Brother Julius Malema has to say. I'll get back in the end of the video. And become one thing. Once we do away with the visa, we are going to know each other. The reason why we are scared is because we don't know each other. We know each other through the lenses of our enemies. We don't know each other. So we must first know each other if we're going to build the government of Africa. So it's important that uh, we engage in this thing. Free movement of people and goods, it will help us appreciate the existence of each other and bring us more closer for the unity of this continent. Um, well, African Union is a, it's a meeting of friends who don't even call each other to order. They can meet with a dictator who has just, you know, uh, killed his own people and then meet for the whole week and not even mention it. And not even mention it. So we can't allow the, the African Union to continue to work the way it is working. We are talking here about SADC. We have a problem here in Zimbabwe. These members of SADC don't call the government of Zimbabwe to order because it's a group of brothers. That government is violating people there. It has just passed a law of gatherings and speeches and all of that. If they don't like you, you are having a political rally, they just send soldiers, they shoot at you and all of No one in Sadek has raised his voice to say, but what is this? So, we cannot have this 
regional bodies and the continental body, including Pan-African Parliament, by the way, which are not biting on countries that are engaged in wrong activities. What is wrong with President Ramaphosa calling President Nagawa to order? It will be coming from a good place. They are all brothers. They are all Africans. They all speak, we assume, for the interest of Africans. So we can't have a situation where we've got regional bodies, continental bodies that become a meeting of elite without concrete solutions to the problems confronting the people of Africa. We have a problem in Mozambique. The problem is solved by sending soldiers. Where have you ever seen soldiers solving a problem? Soldiers don't solve a problem. The leadership must meet and discuss and come up with a binding decision. That's why we say we need one legislature, one military, one currency, one president, so that we know when we go into Mozambique, it's not an interference, it's us providing a solution to our own problems. So we are not happy with how these things are uh, structured. Look, economic integration, trading partners, developmental concepts, we embrace all of that, but it doesn't mean we're ideologically naive. We're not ideologically naive, we're political. And therefore, um, if we were to trade with the USA or to trade with the UK, we trade from a perspective of knowing that we don't share the same ideologies. When you approach them, you know these ones are brutal. I must not sleep on the job. They are not friends. We are not born alone. We are born with people. That's what friends are for. And to have friends that are aligned with you ideologically is nothing wrong. It's not an old-fashioned thing. It's actually apolitical. What we informs your perspective as a person who is a political animal? It's important always to have our ideolo sharing ideological perspective with China. It doesn't mean you can't get a foreign direct investment from Norway or from UK or from a, a Germany. No. You always relate with all countries. Foreign direct investment is more than welcome, but on our terms. Not on Germany's terms. No. We have been giving Germany a lot of money here in South Africa for assembling cars. Not for building cars, for assembling cars. Why is Germany not building those cars here? And create jobs here. In South Africa, we have a problem of unemployment here. Germany will not have a problem. It needs leadership that is decisive, that is going to say, look, we are going to meet you halfway, but you have to meet us halfway. Assembling is not enough. Let's start it here and build it here. So, we, we, and Germany's investment under the EFF government is not threatened at all. The same as any other investment. But we are going to renegotiate the deals. And they must be to the interest of Africans. Botswana did it now, where uh, DBS just wanted to change a diamond deal and all of Botswana said it's not going to happen. You are going to trade here and do diamond here on our terms. Botswana screamed, I mean, DBS screamed, kicked, did all manner of things. If this thing is not signed by when, when we leave, they said you can go. But yeah, we are going to sign the deal on our terms. DBS went back and signed. So that's leadership. Investors want to know what is your position on this matter so that they can navigate around it and see if they can still make profit out of it. They are not interested in you or in anything. They are interested in politics. That's why they mine blood diamond. They know people are being killed there. People, this diamond comes from where people are being killed. They still take it. Why do they want to behave like a holy cow? 
and want to punish people for political ideas, yet they don't punish people who are killing each other for diamonds. They go there and still buy blood diamonds. So be clear, then they will come and invest. Even on the land question, we've got uh, FDA, special development zones, economic zones here in South Africa, where multinational companies have invested a lot of money on the land they don't own. It's owned by the state. Special industrial zones, special uh, economic zones in South Africa where multinational companies have put billions of rents. They don't own that land. So why, what is the obsession with the ownership of the land? Why do you say when people own, the, when you state own the land, the multinational companies want to invest because there is no guarantee? No, you give them uh, the guarantee that from this period to this period, this is yours, these are the benefits, these are the incentives, this is what is going to happen. Please invest here. They will invest. They have done it now under this government. Why do you say when people don't own the land, there won't be investment? There is a huge development that happened right in front of us. You said, you, one of you said, was here for nine years. I think uh, it's a dean of diplomatic corps. There's a huge development here in Midrand where there is more of Africa. That land, that big development you see there, that land is owned by an Indian family. Uh, Nigeria is a very corrupt country. It's a very, very corrupt country. And it's not me saying this, it's not my words. The facts are out there, you can check it by yourself. The facts are out there, Nigeria is very corrupt and somebody needs to tell them. Somebody needs to tell them. It's time that we understand Africa, we are one people. These boundaries were created by white people, not us. We are one people. They came here, we were one people. We didn't have Kenya, we didn't have South Africa, we didn't have Nigeria. These names were brought by the white person. We had one large, one big land called Alkebula. Alkebulan came to be transformed into Africa, which uh, the white person forced upon us, you know? So, Malema condemned him because uh, this man was saying that Malema is always focusing on colonialism and imperialism. The High Commissioner stated that a neocolonialism and imperialism is not a, an issue that Africans should be speaking about right now in the 21st century. But I, uh, I don't agree with the High Commissioner as well because right now the, pros, the, the problems people are facing right now in Africa, the bigger problems are caused by uh, neocolonialism because African leaders are willing to oppress Africans for their own interest. And this is being caused by the interests that the West is putting upon them. There's, there's that pressure the West is putting on these African leaders. And so they are like puppets. If Kenya has gold, they make sure that uh, they switch talk, uh, they make good amendments with the president of Kenya to see if he can buy it. Mostly, uh, and, and, and also unfortunately, our presidents and our leaders get into this trap of accepting uh, Western deals at the expense of harming uh, the Africans. And to me, that's not a good thing to do at all, at all, and at all. It's, it's, it's really not good to do because it's Africans you're doing to them. You who is a leader, you're not different from that African man, that African woman in the shamba, or that African child going to school in the morning without tea because you've raised some things or because you've done this and that. You see, problems Africans are facing today are problems of colonialism, are problems of imperialism. Now they've just metamorphosized and they have become neo-imperialism and neo-colonialism. So it is very, very right. It's important that Julius Malema talks about these problems. Upon listening to this speech, this is what I can conclude. You know, colonialism is a historical phenomenon that reshaped the world. It left an inedible mark on the African continent, not only in the African continent. These people were conquering many places, Asia, South America, Africa, you know. So despite gaining independence from colonial powers, the echoes of these tumultuous past uh, persists, you, you see, shaping the socio-political landscape of Africa and its diaspora. 
So um, with a particular focus on South Africa and Nelson Mandela, I'll, uh, it is important if we emphasize the need of visionary leaders, exemplified by figures like Julius Malema, to guide the continent towards a future free from the shadows of imperialism. So it's important that we have leaders like Julius Malema. Those people who are angry, commenting on the comment section, uh, Julius Malema did this, Julius Malema did that, I'm not living in South Africa, so you might be right, but let's try and... Uh, I see the bigger picture. This man is speaking for the voice of many Africans. He's not only speaking for South Africans. So I think uh, we should uh, stop poking him and uh, let him be. Let him be. Malema has done a lot. Uh, even for me as a Kenyan, he's, uh, he's done a lot. So let's continue with this. One of the effects of colonialism and why Africans need to speak about it is this economic exploitation and inequality not only in south africa are they ex expecting are, are they uh, suffering economic exploitation and inequality but the entire africa and the african diaspora you know the eff the economic freedom uh, fighters economic freedom fighters economic uh, balance economic liberation economic equality has to be met for africans and the black people all over the globe now, colonial powers exploited Africa's vast resources, leaving economic structures that favored the imperialist nations. Despite gaining independence, many African countries continue to grapple with economic uh, disparities and dependency on former colonial powers. You see what's happening? So the legacy of economic exploitation is evident in, is evident in persistent poverty and a lack of inclusive development. You know? So another problem that is being caused by this colonialism and why we should talk about it is social and uh, cultural disruptions. So the cultural fabric of African societies has suffered under colonial rule, leading to the imposition of foreign values and erasure of indigenous knowledge. The consequences of this disruption are still felt today in Africa, South Africa, and in the African diaspora. So, it has manifested in cultural identity struggles and the challenge of reclaiming heritage. Leaders such as Julius Malema, we have leaders such as William Ruto, we have leaders such as President uh, Museveni of Uganda, we have President Paul Kagame of Rwanda, President Nana Kufo Addo of Niger. All the presidents of, uh, of, the, of, the, of Africa should uh, understand this, you know. Uh, leaders must prioritize cultural preservation and appreciation to overcome the enduring impacts of colonization. We have to prioritize cultural preservation and appreciation to overcome the enduring impacts of colonization. Uh, for instance, the problem of LGBTQ, it is a problem because most Africans do not accept it. But according to Africans, uh, it is being forced upon them and uh, in, this is a foreign idea being introduced to Africa and it's trying to erode the African values that have been there over the centuries, over the years. This is one problem that is being caused and it is still felt till, till today. The High Commissioner was very, very wrong. Very wrong. The third one is this, political instability and authoritarianism. This one is very, very self-explanatory, but we have to talk about it. So the arbitrary drawing of borders by colonial powers often results in fragmented nations, sowing seeds of political instability. Post-colonial Africa has witnessed conflicts and power struggles, uh, partly rooted in these artificial boundaries. Leaders like Julius Malema advocate for political reforms, emphasizing the need for self-determination and inclusive governance to address historical grievances. Okay, the fourth one is legacy of apartheid in South Africa. The legacy of apartheid is still uh, echoing in South Africa till today. Uh, there are places where you find the minority white people only living there, and there are places where you find the majority uh, black people overcrowding. You can't even find a space to park your car because it's very, very overcrowded. And when you see the other side, uh, there's plenty of unused space. Plenty is keyword here uh, of unused space. 
but that areas for white people and black people are not allowed there if a black person is seen there they are thought to have gone uh, there to steal that is how uh, black people are being oppressed uh, in uh, in their own land the audacity just imagine the audacity somebody is coming to your home and making your home their home and chasing you outside you know the audacity the audacity so apartheid is still being felt till today it's not an old thing like the commissioner is trying to say so south africa's apartheid era marked by institutionalized racial segregation left an indomitable mark on the nation of south africa you know although apartheid officially ended its legacies persist in socio-economic disparities and racial tensions Leaders such as Julius Malema, a prominent advocate for land reform and economic justice, is playing a crucial role in, dis in dismantling the remnants of apartheid and fostering a more equitable society. That is the fourth point. The fifth and the last point that I gathered is this. African diaspora and the struggle for recognition. African diaspora are always struggling for their identity and being recognized as Africans. That is a very big problem that I'm always trying to address in this channel. And if you love what I do, kindly do subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, and also um, support me on Patreon. Uh, give a super thanks. Just do anything to support the channel. Uh, I'll be so much appreciative of your efforts. So let's talk about this African diaspora and the struggle for recognition. So beyond the continent, the African diaspora continues to grapple with the consequences of historical exploitation from the, from the transatlantic slave trade to ongoing racial injustices. You know, leaders must acknowledge and address the global dimension of African struggles, fostering a solidarity and pushing for policies that rectify historical injustices, you know. Now, to conclude, in the 21st century, Africa stands at a crossroads, grappling with the persistent shadows of colonialism. Visionary leaders exemplified by people like uh, Julius Malema are crucial in navigating this complex terrain by addressing economic disparities, preserving cultural heritage, fostering inclusive governance, dismantling legacies of apartheid, and recognizing the global implication of African struggles. These leaders pave the way for a future where the continent can fully merge from the shadows of imperialism. It is only through such enlightenment, uh, it's only through such enlightened leadership that Africa can chart a course towards genuine independence and prosperity for its majority people. Africa is not only for black people. We have people from Upper Sahel, uh, the Arabs, but they are also Africans. Africans, are, some of us tend to exclude them from being Africans, but those people are Africans. They are Africans as much as we are Africans, or as much as I am an African. Yes. And that was exemplified by what uh, the king of Morocco did to the people of Niger, Burkina Faso, and Mali. Yes. So um, that's the end of the video. Kindly do share your thoughts and on the comment section and remember to subscribe to the channel. Support me on Patreon. Give this video a super thanks. Uh, I will appreciate. See you in the next video. Remember to stay African. Promote Africanism.